where we bring together our sharpest thinkers in the world of business, public service, science, and beyond. My name is Shalia Ngajida, and I am a doctoral candidate, entrepreneur, and a member of the King's Business School Advisory Council. Before I introduce our dynamic panel today, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to register for this event and to learn with us. There's a few housekeeping tips that I would like to share with you before we begin, and that is the structure of today's one hour event. So firstly, I would introduce our panel, DJ Kapi and Shivani Bhargava. I would then also allow Kapi to present a PowerPoint presentation, which she has prepared for us for 20 minutes. We will jump into 15 minutes of Q&A and then we would open it up to you, the audience, in our last 15 minutes of this event for you to ask your pressing questions to Kapi. I know that this is an event that is going to be an enjoyable one. I also know that this is an event that will inspire you. Kapi has come with so much of gems, so much of experience and wisdom to share with us today. And it's truly an honor to have her here. So thank you for holding space with us, you, the audience. So without further ado, I would like to introduce today's panel, and it is none other than DJ Kapi. So Florence Otodolo, famously known as Kapi, is a Nigerian-born DJ, musician, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. She studied business management at King's College, attaining a BSc. During her time at university, she simultaneously produced her own tracks and performed in some of the capital's leading venues. Her amiable personality and ability to seamlessly fuse global tunes made her a crowd favorite and leading DJ in Africa. Kapi was also an avid member of the King's College London DJ Club. In 2013, Kapi leaned into her entrepreneurial spirit and launched Red Velvet Music Group, aimed at providing a platform for African music outside Africa. Kapi has also served as an ambassador and board member for various reputable global brands, including Save the Children and Global Citizen. In 2018, she officially launched her foundation, the Kapi Foundation an organization dedicated to empowering the most vulnerable members of the society by providing them with primary healthcare and quality education. Recently, Kapi became the first African to host a radio show on Apple Music and unveiled her debut album, Original Kapi, which has seen massive global streams and positive reviews since its release. Kapi is a stellar example of the leadership our alumni demonstrate post-graduation, and it is an honor to welcome Kapi to KBS's Connections series. Thank you, Kapi, for coming. Oh, shelly Ann, thank you so much for that introduction. Oh. Wow, I mean... <laughs> I can't believe that's me you're talking about, but just to say welcome everybody. Thank you so much King's Business School for having me. King's College is the first university I ever went to and it's very much great in my heart. It was great, great, great learning years for me and I cannot wait to tell all of you my story. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Kapi. And our other panelist that we have is none other than one of our student ambassadors, Shivani Bhargava. Shivani Bhargava is a final year business management student. Having enjoyed the variety of areas she could explore through her degree, Shivani has specialized within finance and is thrilled to begin her graduate role in the industry this year. She has been involved in four societies through her university experience. And she is also the president of the Women in Business and Finance Society, which gives her a platform to extend learning, resources, and encourage females of the King's community to confidently embark on their careers. Welcome, Shivani. Thank you so much for welcoming me, Shelley. You're welcome. So with that said, Kapi, let's dive into your presentation that you have prepared for our audience today. And let's hear all about your journey through education, through music and through philanthropy. Over Absolutely. to you, Kapi. Thank you so much. It's so nice to connect with you all. Thank you for your time, King's College. Now, 
I get to tell you all about me, who Cuppy is and what I represent and how King's College has helped me get to where I am today. Now, I know several students are here. It's uncertain times. The world is changing, but I'm here to tell you that there is a way and learning never stops. So I'm going to present to you um, a few slides about my journey. Um, now, it's all very, very exciting, of course, because my journey started at a very interesting time. Um, I was in King's College from 2011 to 2014. This time was an interesting time in the world, you know, when the world was changing and there was a lot of exciting things going on. Um, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in business management, and now I am a global entertainer, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. That must be why King's College Business School invited me here today, I think. <laughs> um, right, so my journey. My journey is one that's exciting. I'm going to be giving you an overview of what I've done, what I've achieved, and really looking at how I went from a student with um, some hopes to now, I guess, an adult in business with several passions and ambitions. So we're gonna be going from the start right to how Kings played a role to my music, to my philanthropy, and of course that important thing that I want every business student to do, which is turn your passion into a profession. So my journey started in Lagos. Lagos is one of the most dynamic cities in the world. I love it. I was born in 1992 and Nigeria is the country that I'm super proud to be from. Nigeria is one of the biggest, actually no, it is the biggest economy in Africa. We overtook South Africa about three years ago. And being born in Lagos, which is not the capital, but is the commercial hub, meant that I always had this bustling energy about me. I was always a city girl. So when I look at other cities I've lived in, um, like New York and London, of course, I think Lagos having that hustle mentality and that vibrant speed really, really made me love the city life. Now, being born is one thing, but I always tell people, so this is my first lesson to you all. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you would discover why you were born. Now, music has always been important to me. Being born in Lagos meant I was literally wrapped around African cultures. I could play the drums before I could even spell my own name. You know, it's always been such a dynamic experience for me. And music was really my savior. Now, at 13 years old, I found myself from Lagos, now in London. My parents moved me abroad overnight. I was really, really feeling out of space. I was homesick. I missed Nigeria. The UK was a great opportunity for education, but honestly speaking, it was cold. The food was different. It was a completely different climate. And so for me, it was really music that it was able to take me back. And every time I would listen to music from back home, it would really take me to a space that I felt safe, comfortable. And going through my GCSEs, my A-levels, there was a consistent way of connecting with home, which was always music. Now, my lesson two here is no start is too small. Absolutely no start is too small. I started producing um, at about 16 during my GCSEs. And I remember using this application that was free on all Apple laptops. It's called GarageBand and it still exists today. And that was my way of really trying to create music. I got tired of just listening to music. I wanted to make music. And, you know, GarageBand really, really helped me. Again, this is showing that you can start without a big jump. You know, I didn't invest in any software. I just learned off the back of me having available resource of a free software. And this was an amazing thing because it gave me the confidence. I really studied and I really, really got I guess, a glimpse of what it's like to have the ability to make music and practice makes perfect. And, you know, again, I was in the middle of my A-levels and also kind of trying to navigate my way through life. So what I did was I started producing and sending a lot of artists tracks. 
which was quite interesting. A lot of them did reject me, but nonetheless, I was able to get opportunities. So yes, everyone, like I said, no start is too small. Following this, of course, my A-levels, I got two A's and a B, but I remember so badly wanting to be in London because I knew London was the music scene and London was where I could grow. And having done this, I decided it was really important to get into Kings. Kings was always a dream. I listened to so many different people talking about their university experiences in London and Kings gave me the most dynamic opportunities. My dream was to go and study business management and French. Interesting fact, I didn't get in. Um, I got to be in French and this stopped me from entering the course. However, me being so desperate, knowing that King's was the only place for me, I decided to apply twice. So my first choice and my second choice on UCAS was King's. Now my UCAS time was very stressful. I remember it being difficult and me being very, you know, very confused, but nonetheless, I got in to my second and first choice, which is King's, but I got in for purely business management, not business management in French. And it's quite interesting because my French is actually absolutely très bon. <laughs> now, getting into King's was exciting. I was ready September. Um, I remember that summer before though, I started DJing officially. A bunch of my friends had turned 18 or were turning 18. And this was a great opportunity for me to show what I got. So I literally collected maybe 20, 30 pounds and I was DJing around with secondhand decks. Now this is my third lesson for you, my business people. Find a way to bring value. So my music was clearly valuable enough for people to pay me for it. And that was the biggest indication for me that I had something going. So make sure you bring value. That's what business is. Bring something worth paying for. So after my time at King's, which was fantastic, I'll get into all that. I decided that I needed a new environment and more education. And so I applied to New York University where I studied my masters. A really exciting time in New York was getting a job at Jay-Z's Rock Nation. This is an amazing entertainment company. And my next lesson for you here is learn inside and outside of the business. It's so important. This was something that I really understood being there. It wasn't about just being the forefront. It was about being in the back front. And that led me to finding a way to create my own company, Red Velvet Music Group Limited, which is what I run today. Now, let's get into my time at King's College. Three years. It was wild. It was exciting. It was challenging. There were ups. There were downs. Um, my home was the Waterloo campus on Stamford Street. And I literally live five minutes from there. So I constantly walk across it. It's such an amazing environment. I used to have lunch at the cafeteria or walk down um, to the South Bank Center or go to the Nando's on Stamford Street. So there was lots going on. Um, I studied business management, which was so interesting because the courses are varied. It was a very good degree because it gives you an overlook of what business is. My favorite module, that was Managing Diversity and Inclusion with Dr. Kellan. My most challenging module was Employment Law with Dr. Lockwood. Put it this way, I almost failed Employment Law, but I think I know a few things now. <laughs> Graduation. Now, after my three years, I work really hard and you know I was able to graduate, which was really exciting. Here are some pictures of me looking very happy with my parents. There's even my degree um, certificate. And of course it was exciting. It was at the Barbican Center on the 20, 21st of July, 2014. It was such an amazing experience um, and I really enjoyed it. I got a two one, which I'm very proud of. And it just felt like all the three years came together. The three years were worth it. And you know, the lesson here is education is a dress rehearsal for life that is yours to lead. So it's not about the academics, it's about the experience. And that's what makes you ready for life because so many things I learned, I've been able to apply. Again, not through the academia only, but through the certain scenarios I found myself in at university. And I'll get into that. But this educational experience at King's College made me want to enable more people to do so. Education is so important. And, you know, I'm a woman that comes from Nigeria, a third world country, and not enough women have access to education. So 
Going to university made me determine even more to make sure more people went to university and experienced it. And that's why I got into philanthropy because I believe it's about creating an opportunity, an opportunity for others. And that's how I started the Cuppy Foundation. The Cuppy Foundation was started in 2018 to help tackle child protection, education for young girls and people with learning disabilities. Um, as shelly Ann greatly shared, I'm a member, board member of Save the Children. I'm actually the youngest historic board member of Save the Children. And I have raised a record of $14 million for them. And it's so amazing being able to see this money at use in my country, Nigeria. And so I'd love to share with you a video that um, shares a very important visit I did in 2019. It's to Medugri, known as one of the most dangerous cities. So I'd love to share that with you now. Fighting in the northeast of Nigeria has forced families to flee for their lives and left children like Usman battling to survive. Many of the families I'm about to meet have had to make journeys like this. Dr. Noah runs the medical center and he knows the problems they are facing today. Malnutrition, diseases, poverty, illiteracy. All these problems, you can let them with this conflict. Our work is between life and death. It's amazing to see firsthand the difference Dr. Nora's team are making. Centers like this across Nigeria are vital to make sure every child gets the right nutrition they need to recover and grow. But the scars of conflict run deep. Children need more than medicine to help rebuild their lives. Heart program means healing and learning to do art. This program is from a psychosocial spot, which we are doing in child-friendly spheres. It's so important that children have a space where they can finally be themselves and are able to dream of their future. When you ask them what they want, they all say the same thing, an education, so they can be somebody and look after their family when they grow up. And that's the same answer you'll get from children all across Nigeria. It breaks my heart to know that today, 13 million children are missing out on school completely in our country. I want every child to have the best chance in life and to become who they want to be. Please join me in supporting the work Save the Children is doing across Nigeria today. I'm so glad I could share that video with you. Um, very proud of my partnership with Save the Children. And you know, it's very important for me to give back because I'm here because someone gave me a chance. And so I urge all of us to do what we can in our respective lives to give back as well. And education is power, which is obviously why I'm here. I just wanna say my education is the reason I've been able to do so much. So it's such a pleasure to be here talking to Kings all over again. Now, apart from philanthropy, one of the great things I get to do is music. Music is what I'm known for. A lot of people know me as DJ Cuppy. In King's College, I was Florence Otedola. Um, and, you know, it's quite interesting living two lives, but I'm doing everything I can to show support for both my ventures. Now, as a musician, as an artist, as a producer, as a, you know, brand, all these things, I've done some pretty exciting things. Um, I have production credits with artists such as Wyclef and Meg The Stallion, which some of you may know. I've DJed for two presidential inaugurations and festivals, including South by Southwest and Coachella. I've been able to put out an album called Original Copy recently. I'm signed to a record label called Platoon. Um, and you know, my song, my single on my album, Jalof on the Jet was on the TikTok global chart, which is quite exciting. And I've toured the world. I've been to over 36 different countries. And I did a TV show called Cuppy Takes Africa on Fox, which was an eight country tour. Touring is one of the most exciting things because you get to discover so many new cultures. 
And of course, my radio show, which has been very exciting, which launched during the pandemic. I'm the first African to have a show on Apple Music, which is called African Hour Radio, every Sunday at 2 p.m., of course, if you want to tune in. Now, I'm going to show you another video, which is very exciting. It's a snippet from my interview last year with CNN. Um, it's amazing being able to tell my story to different platforms. And, you know, I think this is a moment my parents were like, oh, okay, well, she's doing something good. <laughs> so here it is, snippet of my interview with CNN. <laughs> With her own radio show and millions of online followers, Kapi is undoubtedly one of Nigeria's most recognizable and popular entertainers. Original Kapi, yeah, I swear that I'm the man. What? Bra, bra, bra. Sorry, guys, this is for coronavirus. Equally at home in London and Lagos, her career has continued to skyrocket since she first took us on a tour of her turntables in 2018. My journey has not necessarily been smooth, but it's been full of lots of surprises, some positives, some negatives. Obviously, recently we've been in the middle of a global pandemic and that has affected a lot of us in ways that we can't imagine. Um, I've been quite outside my home and I miss Nigeria, you know, but for me, in a weird way, I've never felt disconnected to home. So in terms of my career path, you know, when we last met, I was on a mission taking African music to the world. And now, you know, I think I've solidified it and it's taken a new turn. It's all about now taking Africa, I guess, more to the forefront and bringing the world to Africa. Denied her natural audience during these testing times, Cuppy has put her time to good use. As much as I love the fan base and I love being able to physically connect with my crowd, Actually, being in a space where it's a bit more serene and quiet allows me to really soak in my creativity more. I honestly have not been this productive in a long time. <laughs> I've been able to use my music and use my craft to connect with people more than ever. You know, I'm used to being the center of attention with hundreds of thousands of people around me feeling my music. And now technology has allowed me to do that on a bigger scale and on a safer scale as well. And it's not just performing to those locally, it's internationally as well. And actually I find that that allows me to grow my audience and take more risks and get people more interested in Africa. Um, um. Promoting Africa is a key part of her mission, even amid the new reality. She hopes that the upcoming release of her first album will help her tap into an even wider and more diverse audience. I'm so glad I could tell a bit of my story um, through that snippet. Um, you know, I think it was really important to share that with you because I am a DJ and I have had to deal with a new environment, a pandemic. So my business has had to adapt. And so that's another lesson for you. Adaptation is everything. You can survive and strive no matter the environment, but change is not always bad. And so a lot of my shows have gone digital and I've offered a number of new services in order to adapt to my new environment because adaptation is key for survival. So yeah, I've been able to talk about entrepreneurship. So let's get into what I actually do apart from DJing around the world. Um, I started my company, Red Velvet Music Group, um, which was an amazing excitement. Um, it, was, it was really inspired by my time at Rock Nation. I viewed Jay-Z as someone that was an artist, but also an entrepreneur. For those that know Jay-Z lyrics, there's a famous line he says, I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman, which basically means that he is the business. And I've created um, a structure where the copy brand is cushioned by Red Velvet Music Group and we're able to take on other artists, other creatives and create a hub. And I'm really proud of what we've achieved. Um, I employ over, tw over 20 people around three continents. I've worked with a number of amazing partners. Um, we create brand service, but also consultancy for those trying to bridge that creative gap between the Western world and Africa as a continent. 
Now I've worked with different clients from PepsiCo to L'Oreal and LVMH, which is really exciting. So this is my business and this is what I do. Um, let's link this down to King's and how being a university has helped me. University encouraged me to think creatively and have independent thoughts. And also it helped me with complex subjects and forced me to communicate my ideas effectively. That's so important. And of course, like many of you students, you would meet people around the world and I'm in touch with many of them still. I was also able to learn skills like self-discipline, how to organize my structure of work and know what to do when it comes to planning. Studying business management at King's made me a great leader. I'm pretty sure I'm a decent boss. <laughs> and of course, there's that quote, which I always love to say in interviews. Find a job you love and never ever work a day in your life. And university has really helped me hone my passion into a profession. That's the greatest message I have for you today, everyone. Turn your passion into a profession. You need to have a lot of passion to do what you want. And of course, after that, design an action plan and you modify and adapt the action plan as you go along, just like I have had to do in the middle of a pandemic but I'm proud to say my business is still striving. I love what you do as well. It definitely helps. So make sure you plan because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And as you turn your passion into profession, you will find ways of structuring and creating revenue streams, which can be very exciting. I'm making money in ways I never thought I would before. So, you know, being copy, what are some of the cool things I wanna share with you? Well, you know, it's not just about being a DJ, but it's about being a King's College alumni and representing, of course, my business background and everything I do. I've done cool things like I've ran the clo I've rang the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange. Of course, I wore pink. <laughs> I've attended several engagements with exciting leaders in the world, including Princess Anne, Her Royal Highness. There's herself and my dad. Um, at, um, I think, Buckingham Palace. I've achieved um, being part of the Forbes 30 under 30 list, which is really exciting. Last year's class of 2020 in the industry of entertainment. Um, I've consulted for several brands, which is exciting, including Facebook, where I was able to host Mark Zuckerberg in Nigeria. And my most exciting achievement to date I won the King's College Arts and Culture Alumni Award of 2020. So those are some cool things I wanna share with you. And a lot of people ask me what's next. Well, I'm super passionate about education and I'm very excited. I will be going to Oxford University from September to do a master's in science of African studies. And so, you know, I'm not just sitting here as a presenter, and a brand and an artist, but also a fellow student. And I completely believe in education, which is why I'm investing in it again. And this will be my third degree. And, you know, maybe I'll end up doing a doctorate at King's after. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure, um, King's Business School. Thank you, Shelly Ann, and of course, Shivani and the whole King's Business School team. Um, and. If anyone wants to, you can feel free to keep up to date with all my craziness and my strategy building and of course my entrepreneurship. Copy Music is my handle. And then RVMG World is my company. Copy Foundation is my foundation. And actually Cactus on the Roof is very exciting. That's my global event. So once the pandemic is done, if you wanna see me live in action, check out Cactus on the Roof. And of course, my radio show every Sunday on Apple Music, Africa Now Radio. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much, Kapi, for sharing that dynamic, inspiring, and truly empowering slide on your journey. There is so much questions that are coming into our chat box. So my audience, let's keep those questions going. If you do have questions, as I said, please feel free to use the question and answer box. And this is a great time um, for me to have a little bit of a conversation with Kapi on what you have presented, Kapi. Um, so it really, I, I mean, I'm so blown away by the amount of things that you have been able to achieve 
achieve as a student and post graduation. And it really demonstrates to our audience that anything is possible if you are passionate. You know, you use that word passionate a lot. Yes. But we also need to um, take into consideration those people that struggle with time management, those people that struggle with multitasking. And is there any secrets that you would like to share uh, in terms of time management strategies that you used whilst being a student and balancing school, work, interests, DJing? How did you balance it all? I think that's a great question, Shellyanne. Time management is key to success. Yeah, you know, and it's something that I want to say I've mastered, but I'm still working on. Mm -hmm. You know, I have memories of doing essays for King's College, you know, backstage at shows and being on my way to the to the festival, doing my coursework. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like time management is something that you have to work on and it's a skill that you get better at. Mm -hmm. Procrastination is something that happens to all of us. So what I've done is I've been able to create structures for myself. I'm very much, you know, giving you guys an insight. I'm a very organized person. I deal well with physicality. I have a physical diary. I have a physical reminder list. So I'm very much communicative. So when I have something important, I like the reminders. I really like the pressure because I personally handle pressure very well. And so it's about finding your way, you know, are you better off? Um, you know, having that kind of um, um, map, that, that mental map of how you're going to achieve this. Yeah. Are you someone like me that likes to just have a list? Are you doctorate like me? You like to have a list of what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Are you someone that just does it when you want it? It's very relative and it's very much a subjective thing, but time management is a skill you get better at. And this is why I'm so passionate about education because mm. I believe the pressure of coursework, mm. of getting to lectures on time, the pressure of all these things make you very much ready for the world of business. You know, I remember uh, my first year, I went to a tutorial late at Stanford Street in King's College. And the professor said I couldn't go in. I was too late. And so after I missed out on that tutorial, every single one, I was on time. And this is the kind of discipline you need in life. I can't be late for meetings with clients. I cannot be unprofessional. Time is of the essence and university helps teach you that as well. Excellent, Kapi. Thank you so much. Now, you also talked about the importance of education, even as you developed your music career. Now, yeah. we have persons who are learning as they're going. There is a self-taught industry as well. And sometimes students, when they are choosing a program, students can feel like, if I do education, how does it apply in the real world? You know, I have a, I have a program uh, that I'm really proud of that I've graduated from, but is there really any use for it? And what I'd love to know from you, Kapi, is what modules or courses that you did at King's that you really see coming up in your entrepreneurship as something that you can draw from? Yeah, that's such a great question. You know, we always say, oh, why am I university is so boring. Exactly. I'm yeah. not going to apply corporate finance or employment law to my life. Exactly. I mean, that's why I went for King's Business School mm. because the modules are so varied and so dynamic. Mm. For example, my favorite module, like I mentioned, diversity and inclusion. You know, this was taught by Dr. Kellan. And I can tell you every day in my life, I experience aspects of applying diversity and inclusion. And that's the world we live in. Now, the modules are very flexible and fluid. You know, it's not just about studying cases and it's not just about applying theories. They were very much about the human touch. They were very much about field work, about experiencing things. And that has made me so much better of a businesswoman in a world where, you know, there's so many movements trying to make sure that we are as inclusive as possible. Studying that in school allows me really understand where we've been, mm. how back in the day, um, and this is something we still struggle with, but things were not as we were. I'm a black woman able to be on this platform because history has rewritten itself. And understanding that can be quite epic, you know, to really understand the future and appreciate the future, you have to look at the past. And so many modules allow us to do that. 
And so, you know, I beg students to not sit there thinking this is a waste of my time. It will come up at some point in your life and it will give you that confidence you need because knowledge is power always. And, you know, you touched on a really important topic, which is entrepreneurship, especially female entrepreneurship. Um, a recent review uh, led by the government, the Rose Review, uh, it was found that actually only 6% of UK women run their own businesses. And not only that, but women are usually last in line for funding, venture capitalist funding in particular for their businesses. And usually male dominated or male led entrepreneurship uh, startups tend to get a foot ahead. What I'd like to know from you, Kapi, particularly for the audience, those who are interested in entrepreneurship, what are some key things that you would suggest to a female entrepreneur that is thinking about launching herself into a career in entrepreneurship? Thanks for sharing that statistic. 6% is an appalling number. Mm. Um, you know, and I feel like as a woman who operates in a male dominated industry, you know, I can certainly identify with the glass ceilings and the challenges. Mm. You know, one thing I have to say about my time at King's is that I was so proud. You know, our course was very much balanced. Um, you know, I felt like there were as many men as women, and it was an international community that respected both genders. Now, the workplace is unfortunately not like that. And so, you know, I think I entered into the real world um, with quite a shocker. And, you know, like you said, venture capital firms, private equities are investing in men more than women. We already know there's a massive gap when it comes to gender pay. And so there's so many issues that we still have. Now for female entrepreneurs like myself, we unfortunately have to be in a mentality that disallows us from being victims. You know, you have to have this mentality knowing that you are bringing just as much to the table. And it's a shame we have to work twice as hard as women to achieve twice as, half as much. But I've always had the mentality of, no, actually, I'm not a female DJ, I'm a DJ. I'm not a female entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm. And so it's having this mentality of, of, um, of equality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, it's looking at how history has played itself. Mm -hmm. You are what you believe you are. Yes. And it's up to the world to catch up. Yes. You know? And so it's very important for no one to feel like their gender is used against them. Mm. It, it will be if you allow it. Now, I'm a female DJ. I cannot tell you the countless amount of times, especially when I was younger, I would go to shows and they would say, oh, you're the DJ. Do you know how to do that? And, you know, it's constantly having to prove myself, but it's all about your skill set. Let your work speak for itself. Don't let your gender speak for yourself. Let your right. work. And it's about kicking down doors. And I'll tell you, you know, all my King's College London, students every day I still have to fight and the fight doesn't stop but I'm hoping that I am making it easier and creating a path for another young woman who has the same thing to prove and I think that more women need to support each other I'm so inspired when I meet women and I'm so excited that's why you know when I found out Shelly Ann you were hosting today I was very excited another strong woman Yes, thank you so much, Kapi. And you know, that is a powerful piece that you have provided around leaning in, taking up space, you know, overcoming stereotypes. Or what approaches success, everything. Approaches yeah, everything. What success should look like. I mean, we have, especially for students, we have the pressures of our family members, we have the pressures of our friends, we have the pressures of the industry that we belong to, pressures of society. And you know, Kapi, you've really just talked about being this person that is able to curate your career narration that is most authentic to you. Um, and I, I love that how I love how you have done it so authentically um, and so boldly as well. So the, the question that I have for you, because you are so multidimensional, right? Boundless in, in, in your potentiality. Um, for somebody that wants to dive into, let's say, philanthropy, or they want to dive into um, something that is a little far removed from what they have studied, yes. what would you say um, are some of the key 
things that a person might want to consider so that they're not creating a brand that that's a little bit distracting, but on brand? Hmm, that's a great question. I mean, I think when you look at myself, I'm a great example of it. You know, I studied business management um, at King's and now I'm a entertainer and entrepreneur. Now, yes, I agree. My entrepreneurship allows me to link back to my degree. But I did go to New York University for two years to get a master's in music for that very reason. You have to know your stuff. And I think entering the music industry from my King's degree, I felt like I was a little bit underprepared to enter music. And that's why I needed that extra experience. You can never learn too much. And so that extra degree in music gave me that padding I needed and that confidence I needed. And when it comes to specializing, you need to have the skill set. You know, no matter what you do, things and doors can open, but they will not keep you in there. Um, actually, I'm very excited. I believe my father is watching, who's a very great mentor of mine, Mr. Femi Tedola. And he always told me anything worth doing is worth doing well. You know, so if you want to be, um, if you want to be anything in this world, do it the right way. And so having those skill sets were very key to me. So my advice is to really, really get into that specialization, study what you want to do, make sure you're well educated in it and you're well ready for it. That will really help you. Now, like I said, no experience is ever wasted. And so you can always link back your disciplines to one another. But if you're going for something very specific, you have to be prepared. Opportunity needs preparation. And sometimes in love, life, we only get one, one opportunity. And so make sure you're ready for that moment. It's very important. Um, you know, and having said that as well, I feel like we must make sure that we are doing things for the right reasons. Why do you want to go into something? Mm. Is it because you're expected to? Is it because what is your incentive? What is your preferred outcome? Mm -hmm. Do what you love. It makes it a lot easier to do it. Yes. And actually this morning I was chatting with a colleague of mine and I talked about this, this idea of getting comfortable with falling, getting comfortable with failure, getting comfortable with feeling fast and feeling forward um, and really trying new things. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, that's okay. And what I've seen from your story, Kapi, is that you have really taken your journey as a learning journey. One where I'm trying different things and I'm just seeing where I land. And for somebody in here that might be looking at this event and saying to themselves, I am not ready. I'm not ready to take those risks. I'm not ready. I don't feel like I have the skills necessary. What would you say to that person to give them that little push, that little leg up? You know, I think, you know, I've always had very much a capitalist approach. Yeah. High risk, high return. You don't ask, you don't get. Right. You know, these are mottos I live by. Mm -hmm. Had I not taken that leap to be cuppy and to try these new things, I would never have become who I am. Mm. And you know, I love that. It's getting used to falling, getting used to failing. You know, for every, you know, and I really want the students to understand this, for every single accomplishment I've achieved, there have been about 10 doors closed. For every yes, there's been 10 no's. Mm -hmm. And that's what business is about. Every entrepreneur will tell you this. Mm -hmm. Risk taking is part of what you must do. And nothing, yes, you can have more calculated risks, but the world is so unpredictable that's why entrepreneurship is not easy if it was everyone would be an entrepreneur yeah. and so that's why you have to be ready to take those risks and worst case you will learn from it yes. you know I don't think any experience is ever wasted I've had many drawbacks you know looking at the pandemic it ruined half the plans I had mm. here I am readjusting re-strategizing and coming up with new safer fresher ways to run my business and that's so important mm -hmm. so you know you've got to go for it you've got to go all in a hundred and one percent I know you tried your best yes. you know and anything worth doing like my dad always tells me is worth doing well Excellent. Thank you so much, Kapi, for that. And I think that that's a great segue for us to jump into Q&A. We have loads of questions in here. But before we jump into the questions, I'd like to bring in our student ambassador, Shivani, for 
any reflections that you have on what Kapi has said, particularly since you are the president of the Women in Business Society. So I'd love to hear your, your take on, on what Kapi has said. And even with your own membership, what are some of the things that you've been seeing um, that people are really interested in with regards to entrepreneurship? Um, first of all, thank you so much, Kapi, for giving us the presentation. Oh, thank you. One thing that has really, really stood out in my head, how Kapi said, that we should normalize women DJs, we should normalize women entrepreneurs, we should not be mentioning them as female entrepreneurs or female DJs. They are DJs, they're succeeding, and the fact that they're women, it's not something unique, that should not be treated as something being unique. They are like the equality should be normalized. So that's one way that the world should be going forward with. Um, and then again, the fact that Kapi has been like until now, she's achieved so much in life, but she does not want to settle down. She wants to learn more. She wants to keep moving forward. Now she is going for another uh, phase of her life when she's gonna be beginning into academics again. And she knows like, she knows that she's gonna be having um, again, uh, taking experiences from everything. So she knows that that's going to add to um, her own like skill set that she has. So yeah, that really stood out to me. That's a great point, Shivani. Like I said, never stop learning. And learning is a constant journey. It's exciting. And like I said earlier, knowledge is power. And it'll take you into some of the most exciting places and powerful rooms in the world. Yes. So Kapi, we have some questions uh, that our audience has fielded. And the question, uh, this first question comes from Noemi Sanchez. Hello, Noemi. Thank you for your question. And the question to Kapi is, honored to greet you, Kapi. I want to ask you about your different passions. Did you figure out all you wanted to do from the beginning? Or as you walked down the path, you slowly realized it? That's a great question. I knew I loved music but I didn't know what aspect of music. I didn't know whether I wanted to work as a DJ, as a producer, as a songwriter, as a sound engineer. And so my advice is a passion is an authentic feeling, go with it. And it doesn't have to be specific or specialized, but as you chase that passion, you find, okay, in this field, I prefer this side. I prefer that side. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a bit like going into business. What part of the business are you entering? Mm -hmm. You know, what sector do you really like? Are you more of a salesperson? Are you more of a strategist? What side fits your role, fits your personality, you know? And so I found as I was going on my journey, so it was just, I love music. I love music. Okay, I'm in the industry. I love engaging with fans I love making music okay I don't really like the management side of it okay I don't really like the idea of promotions you know you start specializing as you go in that journey but a passion is something that only you can find I cannot tell you what your passion is about neither can your parents neither can your university neither can your friends that is something you have to find and studying business alone shows that you're passionate about it. And so, as I said, like I, I noticed, it's the same way you do a degree at King's, some modules you love, some modules you hate. As you form these experiences, they guide you to let you know what you like. And I always say, you have to go through things and you have to find things challenging to know what doesn't work for you. So nothing is ever wasted. Yes. Another question comes from Louise Jackman and her question to you is, how do you manage the business side of things versus the creative side of things? How do I manage the business side of things versus the creative? Yes. That's always a challenge, you know, yeah. and I think that, you know, my creative side wants to go to the moon, you know? <laughs> but my business side is saying you have to manage your costs mm -hmm. and you have to have a return on investment to go to the moon. Mm -hmm. And so it's a constant balance, you know? And as a businesswoman, I'm excited to wear that hat because I'm so much more involved in my business than many artists. Um, you know, I have to say in my industry, you don't meet many educated people, mm -hmm. which is changing, but it's true, it's a fact. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I love bringing the perspective of looking at things as a business. You know, I'm talking to my label saying, okay, cool. If we invest in this music video, this is what we'll get. This is the outcome. This is all about building 
a complete, I guess, a case really, a business case. And, you know, I, I have to say my creativity side is probably a little bit um, controlled, you know, it's capped because I am my business. I own my business, yes. I run my business. I have salaries to pay, mm -hmm. you know, I have deliverables. I have very, very high financial pressures mm -hmm. and obligations, yeah. you know, but I think that I also have a great team that's also able to balance that. Yes. I'm probably, you know, the, um, I'm not the artist that's like, oh, I want to be in a golden egg and then I want to be you know I want to appear in a helicopter I'm not that kind of artist um, but you get artists like that and that's fine it's just that you know it has to be justified and that's what business is creating value and justifying it so creativity is amazing but creativity also like I said has to be justified if not it's just it's just a um, <laughs> Yeah, then it's just essentially just a, it's a thing that cannot cannot be sustainable. Yes. It's just a moment. Yes. And the, the other question that we have is from Alexandra Brookman. And she asks, Kapi, in your experience, what role can universities play to make a difference in the world? Wow, that's a great question. Um, well, for starters, universities can, I think, bring people together, um, which is a, this is a great example, what King's Business School is doing, you know, allowing us to connect and allowing me to tell my story and allowing mm -hmm. me to connect with you guys and give you that encouragement as tomorrow's leaders. Mm -hmm. I think universities have a responsibility to tell real stories, um, to help guide the world. A lot of universities have been involved in helping us through this global pandemic you know after all everyone watching this the students you are tomorrow's leaders yes. so those that are here now may not be here in the future yes. and so it's about leaving behind an environment that you can thrive in you can mm -hmm. lead it and that's the responsibility and I think King's College does a beautiful thing at that excellent and we'll take a question from your YouTube audience and the question is how are you able to manage distraction while chasing your dreams? And this question is from Diviesh Mystery. Distractions? And they said social media in particular. Social media. Well, social media is a big part of my job. Um, you know, I'm really proud. I've built, I think, over 12 million fans over social media. And I feel like you know it's part and parcel now i want to say one thing distractions are not always a bad thing mm. you know a distraction can become a deviation i remember when i heard about the pandemic happening in the beginning you know i wasn't sure what was going on like many of us it seemed like something foreign and far away and actually i started looking into it and seeing how creatives that were already affected were reacting a lot of things were getting cancelled in their own countries and so i felt like i had a very good insight of what was happening and what was going to happen so that distraction became a deviation and allowed me to plan so a distraction is not always a distraction um i think that very often um you know it depends you have to know what your skill set is. And if it feels like a proper distraction, it probably is. Yeah. You know, um, now social media for me is a tool. Yes. Um, so I, you know, I look at my stats um, and I spend a lot of hours on social media, but I can justify that because that's my job. Yeah. And social media is one of my revenue streams. Mm -hmm. Now, if it isn't and you're just on social media, you know, that's probably not justified. You know, me watching Netflix for six hours mm. is not helping my job. And so that's this distraction. You know, and I think it's all also going down to that work-life balance. Yes. My job is also to pull from in others, to be inspired, to experience. So if I'm watching Netflix for two hours versus six hours, that's different. So I think balance is about every everything we have to achieve. And that is what school is. That is why in King's College, we weren't there from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You have lectures, mm -hmm. you come and go. You have to create that discipline to decide if you're going to do your work, if you're going to do your coursework, if you're going to study, or if you're just going to chill out all day. Yeah. As you make your bed, so shall you lie in it. So what you do will always 
affect the outcome. Yeah. And you have to make sure that you get in control and you make your distractions more like deviations and make them into something productive. Excellent. And final question. We have just five more minutes before we close. And this actually touches on the fact, copy that you talked about you know, doing your education, trying new things, um, and really knowing your strengths, especially since you've built a career in music, which can be a very difficult industry to pierce through. So Hannah Pratt from the alumni team, she asks, you've talked a bit about the power of networks. Have you any advice for current students on how they can make the most of their time at King's to build a personal and professional network? And I guess you can put it also in the context of piercing into music as well. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, who you know is so important. Mm. And who you, and who, you um, who you surround yourself with is so important. You know, again, my father being one of my greatest mentors said, you know, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Yes. It's the people you surround yourself with. And my time at King's, I was with some of the most amazing budding entrepreneurs. Some are now in Russia, some are in mm -hmm. Dubai, some are in, um, in Southeast Asia. And it's really, really important to make sure that as you are in King's, you're building connections through common goals, common struggles. I remember there was a group of us that almost failed corporate finance. So we got together and we studied commonalities bring people together and we're all working towards that goal of graduation of entering the workplace of leading of starting our businesses and so you have to make sure you make those connections mm -hmm. now connections being made is one thing maintaining yep. them is another yep. yep and that's actually much more difficult you know I meet many people but how many people do I stay in touch with how many people do I further connect with mm -hmm. and that's really really important and I think for me, that's been a very big challenge. I think when I got into music, I felt, oh, all my friends are in the music, um, are in the budding um, industries. Mm -hmm. They're in finance, they're in insurance, mm -hmm. they're in other things. They're not interested in my music. And turns out we have a lot more in common. Mm -hmm. And so my advice to you all is to make sure you create connections and maintain them. You know, every student here, I want you to be like me. I want you to, you know, I left Kings in 2014 and you know what, it's 2021, I think. Yes. <laughs> and years later, here I am, you know, seven years later, I'm still in touch with Kings and I hope you can be like Cuppy and be giving your talk as well. Thank you. Excellent. And thank you so much, Kapi, for giving your time to us this morning into this afternoon. It has been a very fruitful conversation. I think it has left us inspired, left, left us very empowered to know that we can really take our education into our own hands um, and we can have that level of ownership and authenticity to our journey. A huge thank you to Shivani. Shivani, thank you for sharing your, uh, in, your insights as well as your sharing around what you've learned um, from this conversation today. And I guess, Shivani, I would leave it to you. Is there any particular question or anything that you'd like to say copy to copy before we close off Shivani um I would have a quick question then <laughs> um graduate students they would mostly go for certain parts rather than going for entrepreneurships they think that they value certainty over the uncertainty of okay, going for their passions in that way so what advice would you have for them I think that is a fantastic point to end with you know, it is not easy to be an entrepreneur. It is so uncertain. You take on responsibilities for things outside your control, mm -hmm. such as the global market, the working climate, policy, things that you cannot control. But I will tell you this, high risk is high return. And there's nothing better than being able to not necessarily only work for someone, but to create jobs for other people. And you create these teams and these networks and it feels so good. Like I said, you know, I've been given an opportunity by King's College to talk to you today. And so I also feel like I must take on that responsibility to create other opportunities for others. And that means that I'm taking on the uncertainty, I'm going to the world and I'm building a business frame 
And that for me is high return and it makes the risk worth it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kapi, to Thank our interactive much. audience. Thank you so much for deciding to spend time with us today. You have watched the second edition and spring series of our Connections event. If you enjoyed this, please leave your comments. Feel free to check out Kapi's handles to see more from her. And we hope to host you at another event. Thank you, audience. And thank you, Shavon.